I'll do the example of integrating over this solid cone. Let's call it B, that's the name of this solid object, and I'd like to compute the volume integral of B, in other words, integrate 1 dV. Uh, this cone, this example that I'm going to do, I'm going to let it have a height of 5, so the z value is 5 here, and I'll let it have a vertex angle of pi over 2. And that means that pi over 2 is the angle from one side of the cone to the other as I cut across the middle of it. Uh, so first of all, let's do this integral in Cartesian coordinates. I'm going to set up the bounds in Cartesian coordinates, and here's how uh, to think of, of what I'm writing down here. Think of uh, everything below whatever I'm writing is fixed. So I'm going to fix x and y, and I'm going to tell you what z should run from, from where to where. So let's fix our x and our y. Let's say we, we go down to a point here, x and y, and what I'm looking at now is this little, this little thread or filament. It comes up, it hits the cone at some point, it goes through inside the cone, and then it pops out the top. So where it pops out the top, pretty easy to tell. It hit, it, it, it's hit the top of the cone at z equals 5. So let's write down z equals 5. Now on the other hand, wherever it enters, I need to say what that is in terms of x and y. And the equation for this cone, because it's a cone that makes a 45 degree angle with the xy plane, the equation for this cone, the outside of it, is actually z equals square root x squared plus y squared. So if you wanted to compute something with a different vertex angle, well then you'd have to do a little rise over run computation to get a constant in up right there to tilt it either flatter or, or uh, more steep. Okay, so the bottom, the bottom bound for z is squ uh, square root x squared plus y squared. That's where uh, the integral in z is going to start. Now on the other hand, how do I figure out what y is? Well, uh, the y bounds, uh, that's going to be how far I move in this direction. And remember, I'm thinking of x now being fixed, because everything below y is x. So I fix my x, and I ask, where, what, what happens to my y? Well, let's cast the shadow of this whole cone down into the xy plane. I get something like a, like a circle, like this. And uh, what's the equation for that circle? Well, casting the shadow down, it's the shadow of the circle at the very top. And the circle at the very top is when z equals 5. And z is equal to square root x squared plus y squared. So this is actually 5 equals square root x squared plus y squared. That's the, that's the equation of this circle. And so in particular, I could say it's a circle of radius 5, x squared plus y squared. And if I want to know what y, what the bounds for y are, well, I fix myself an x, and I look at going along uh, y from the bottom part of the circle to the top part of the circle. So that goes from, let's solve for y, I get y goes from uh, y, well, I can take a square root of 25 minus x squared, and it's a plus or a minus. And the minus will end up on the left-hand side and the plus will end up on the right-hand side. Great. Now, the only thing I have left to do is just let x do its thing, all the way from negative, well, what's the radius of this circle? It's 5, so negative 5 up to 5. Great. So now I'm ready to set up my integral. The Cartesian dv is just dx dy dz, and I'm going to integrate dz first. So I'll say 1 dz. Now, z goes from square root x squared plus y squared up to 5. Then I'll say dy. And y is going to go from negative square root 25 minus x squared up to square root 25 minus x squared. And then finally, x is going to go from minus 5 to 5. And I will point out that you could have integrated with respect to x right there instead of y, and then had y go from minus 5 to 5, and it would have looked very similar. OK, let's do cylindrical next. OK, all ready to do cylindrical. So let's do the same thing again, where we write down the bounds for each of the variables so that I can trace out that solid cone B. Uh, I'll start with z again. And now r and theta below z are going to be fixed. And I'm going to see what the bounds of z are. Well, again, if I fix my r and my theta, I fix some point essentially in the xy plane. And I want to know uh, what happens to z. So again, I start out at the cone, and I stop uh, at, the, at the, the bottom, this entry point into the cone, and then I stop at the top of the cone. And so z is going to be bounded above by 5 again. And it's still going to be bounded below by x squared plus y squared square root. But in this case, that's, I want to say what that is in terms of r and theta. And r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's just a bottom bound of r. A little easier to write. Excellent. 
Now I want to integrate over this, this circle, the shadow of this cone, in terms of r and theta. And that's not too hard, in fact, because I'm just now integrating over a circle in polar coordinates. So r needs to go from 0 out to 5, that's the radius of this circle, and then theta should swing all the way around from 0 to 2 pi. So r goes from 0 to 5, and then theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And so my volume integral becomes, uh, let's integrate inside out. So I have integral from z equals r to 5 uh, dz. I have integral from 0 to 5 in r, dr, and I have integral from 0 to 2 pi in theta, d theta. But remember, the volume element dv is r dz dr d theta. So I need an r there because I'm integrating 1. I'm integrating just dv. So that's my volume integral for uh, this solid cone in cylindrical coordinates. Okay, clean things up a little bit, and now we're all ready to tackle spherical coordinates. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at the bounds uh, for the three spherical coordinates, and I'll look at rho first, and I'll fix phi and theta underneath it. So what are the bounds for rho? Well, remember rho is a, is a, is a, it's something that moves in the radial direction, so it's like a little thread that starts off at the origin and moves out until it hits the top of the cone. So where does rho start? Starts at zero at the origin. It's a radius, spherical radius of zero. Now it stops right here at the top of the cone, and that's at z equals five. So let's just kind of put in parentheses z equals five. We'll figure out how to say what that is. We want to say what z equals five is as a value of rho given in terms of phi and theta. So let me remind you real quick that in spherical coordinates, I can convert to z by taking rho cos phi. That's the value of z. And so I know that I have to stop when rho cos phi is equal to 5, because that's the z value that I stop at. And so that tells me that rho, in terms of cos phi, must be 5 over cos phi. And that's what I'm looking for. z equals 5 is given by the value rho equals 5 over cos phi. Excellent. That's pretty much the hard part. So now, I just ask, what does, how does phi change? Well, I've, I've, uh, I've, I'm fixing my theta, so I'm just saying I'm at, at some particular angle and I want to know how do I swing phi in order to get down to the edge of the cone. Well, this, the vertex angle is pi over 2, and, uh, and so I have to come down half of that, pi over 4, to get down to the edge of the cone here. So phi goes from 0 to pi over 4. And then finally, the easiest one, theta swings all the way around back again, so 0 to 2 pi. Now let's write down the volume integral. Spherical coordinates have the strangest dv, so let's make sure we write that. I've got a rho squared sine phi, that's the part of the dv, and then I'll have a d rho, d theta, d phi, so let's go rho first, then phi next, and then d theta last. The first integral is from 0 to 5 over cos phi. The next integral is from 0 to pi over 4, and the last integral is from 0 to 2 pi. And that will give us the volume of the cone. It's not a bad exercise to plug all these three guys into Mathematica, and I sure hope you get the same thing, otherwise I'll have to redo this video.